Welcome, and in this session, we're going to be reading Matthew chapter 23, and this is awesome because Jesus destroys the hypocrites. Let's start in verse 1. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples. So, you know, when you're reading the scriptures, you need to ask a few things, okay? Number one, who wrote what you are reading? It's very important to understand who wrote it. It makes a big difference, trust me. Number two, who's speaking in the text that you're reading? And number three, who's the audience? You know, sometimes Jesus is just talking to Peter, James, and or John. Sometimes Jesus is just talking to his disciples. It makes a big difference. Sometimes Jesus is talking to the multitudes, and other times Jesus is talking to the hypocrites or the sinners. Okay? It makes a big difference because you you need to know these things in order to know how to apply the word the teachings, the commands that you're reading. Here in this context, Jesus spoke not only to his disciples, but also to the multitudes, to the general public. So it's it's important to understand that. This was not just a teaching that applied to his disciples, but it applied to the general public as well. What did he say? Verse 2, Jesus said, okay, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Okay, what does that mean? The scribes and the Pharisees are taking Moses' place. The scribes and the Pharisees are coming to you in the name and in the authority of Moses. The scribes and the Pharisees, if you would, wear Moses' hat. That is a very powerful thing. That's a very meaningful and very serious thing to say to Jews, okay? Especially to Jews. You need to understand that the multitudes and the disciples that Jesus was speaking to were Jews, okay? He wasn't in Rome. He wasn't in Africa. He was in Israel speaking to the multitudes in his own country and to his disciples. So he said the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Now, I know a lot of Christians today, they have the perception that all Pharisees are evil. All Pharisees are hypocrites. All Pharisees are bad. That's just not the case. More than half of the New Testament was written by a Pharisee. More than half. Consider this. In the book of Philippians, Paul's letter to the Philippians, Paul said very clearly, I am a Pharisee. He didn't say he was a Pharisee. He didn't say he, re- he repented from his Phariseeism. No, he was a Pharisee. As far as we know, he was a Pharisee all his life. Okay? When you're reading the text of the so-called New Testament, you are reading, more than likely, text that was written by Pharisee. So don't be too overly negative on all Pharisees because that's just not the case. Nicodemus as well was a Pharisee. Jesus didn't really, I mean, he could have been born again. There was other Pharisees as well uh, that was in Jesus' life. Jesus visited Pharisees' homes. He didn't have to go to their homes to for a visit. He paid he, he, he did social calls and f- social visits. He went to Pharisees' homes, ate supper, ate dinner, all kinds of things. Okay? So all Pharisees were not evil. Not all of them. But generally speaking, yes, the Pharisees were hypocrites. The word Pharisee is from the Hebrew word parashim, which means holy, set apart, you know, separated, separate from the world. The world, And that's good. God come, call, uh, calls us to be separate, to be holy. That's what, that's what Jesus said. So in essence, you know, by the definition of Pharisee, Jesus more or less called people to be set apart, holy, you know, separate from the world system. So, But there was a group of people called the Pharisees, where they called themselves the Pharisees. And generally speaking, these people were not really living up to their their title. They were hypocrites. They were sinners speaking and preaching righteousness. 
So when you say to a Jew or to a Jewish crowd, a Jewish group, you know, that so-and-so or so-and-such and such a group sits on Moses' seat, that's a huge, huge statement. That's, that's a huge statement. That's saying, hey, you better listen to these people, okay? The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Verse 3, all things, therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, observe and do. Huh? What? I thought Jesus was against the Pharisees. I thought Jesus was against the doctrine of the Pharisees. Now, we read several chapters ago that um, Jesus was, he said, you know, he said to his disciples, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. And his disciples thought he meant the doctrine of the Pharisees. That's not what he meant. Yeast is leavening agent. The, the, le, yeast is what causes the, the, the dough to be puffed up, to be proud, okay? To make it look bigger than it really, or heavier than it really is. If you take a, you know, a, a, a square foot of leavened dough, or, you know, like leavened bread, a square, or I should say a cubic foot, a foot of leavened bread, you know, put it on a scale, it's going to be a whole lot lighter than a cubic foot of unleavened bread. Oh, yeah. Unleavened bread symbolizes humility without the yeast, without the pride. It's humility. A lot heavier, a lot more substance to it. A lot more meaning to it. Whereas yeast causes it to be puffed up and makes it look bigger and more heavy and more serious than what it really is. Okay? So when Jesus said, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, he was talking about the pride of the Pharisees, the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. Because a lot of Pharisees were, you know, they, they preached righteousness. And like Jesus said here, all things, therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, observe and do. They said all the right things. They preached all the right doctrine. They had the right teachings. They had the right doctrine. Jesus said all things that they tell you to observe and do, observe, observe and do. That's very, very important. You need to understand, too, the Pharisees observed the Tanakh, or yeah, the Tanakh and the oral law and the oral traditions. Now we know that Jesus was against at least some of the oral traditions because he said that certain traditions went against the word of God, went against the commands of God. And that's, you know, that's, that's, that's taken into consideration. But the Pharisees, the doctrine of the Pharisees included the oral law, the Torah, the Nevi'im, the prophets, and the Ketuvim, the writings, okay? So you need to understand in the, in the Jewish world, there, there is uh, basically four ca categories of doctrine. There's, there's the Torah, there's the Nevi'im, and there's the Ketuvim. There's the three main ones, that, which makes the TNK, Torah, Nevi'im, Ketuvim. The Tanakh, which is what the uh, Christians call, the Christians call the so-called Old Testament. But the, the Pharisees also went by the oral law, the oral Torah, the oral traditions. So you need to understand that when Jesus said, all things, therefore, the Pharisees observe, you need to observe and do. Listen to them. Listen to them. That's a big statement. That's a huge statement. Because the Pharisees observed not only the, you know, the so-called... Uh, canonized scripture, but also the uncanonized scripture. Do you know that in those days that a lot of the Old Testament, a lot of the Bible that we have today was not officially canonized, not officially counted as scripture or word of God, you know? For example, according to, the, according to Oxford University Press, that even the book of Psalms wasn't officially canonized until the second, third century after Jesus. Okay? So, yeah, it's okay in the Lord's eyes to believe and observe that which is not officially canonized. Okay? 
That's what he said here. That's what it said. You look at the precepts here. Look at the look at the look at the implications here. Because that's what the Pharisees were known for. They were known for going by the Torah, which is you know, the obvious canonized scripture. It was it was canonized right from the very, very beginning, or considered to be word of God or authentic and true right from the very beginning. Because the Torah was given, you know, through Moshe, through Moses, in the sight of all the nation of Israel, all of the children of Israel saw it. Nobody had to wonder, is this right or is this not right? Is this what God said or is this not what God said? They all knew it's what God said. They, they all heard the voice of God. They, you know, they heard so much of the voice of God, they had to tell Mo, Moses, hey, listen, we, we, we know you're, you're, you're an honest and true guy. We know that you're an honest and true man, and, and we trust you. you. We can't stand to hear any more of the, vo- of the word of God here. You go, you go get the word of God for us and, and bring it back to us. They, they, they invested in it. They, they believed in it right from the very beginning. Not so much so with the Nevi'im, the, the prophets, or the Ketuvim. The writings, the, the like the Psalms and, and the, the historical writings and such. It took time for people to actually really uh, get into it um, and, and trust it as what they would call the Word of God, or at least canonize it, okay? So what an amazing thing that Jesus said here. Verse 3, all things, therefore, that the Pharisees tell you to observe, which is not just the Torah, okay? All things they tell you to observe, observe and do. But, (laughs) check out the last half of that verse. But don't do their works. Why? Because they're sinners. They're sinners. They're hypocrites. But don't do their works. For they say and don't do. They preach righteousness. They preach the right things, but they don't do it. They got the right things on their lips but not in their actions. So listen to what they say, observe and do everything they tell you to observe and do, but don't do what they do because they're hypocrites. They are sinners. And you know how much I like that. You know how much of a friend of sinners I am. We we all know that Jesus is a friend of repentant sinners. Sinners that were that are actually ex-sinners that have repented of their sin and came to Jesus to get the words of God to learn how to live in righteousness. Those those are the people that Jesus our friend are, is a friend to. Those who were sinners, those who were sinners, and who turned from their sin, completely forsook their sin themselves, and and went and and, and uh, obeyed uh, Jesus, uh, totally, totally obeyed Jesus, completely. Verse 4. Oh, excuse me, let's finish off verse 3. For they don't do, but don't do their works, for they say and don't do. They preach the right things, but they don't do it. They're sinners. Verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens that are grievous or grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not lift lift a finger to help them Jesus is Yeshua wants you to help people to obey the the word of God The Pharisees put heavy burdens on people, unreasonably heavy burdens on people, burdens that they wouldn't carry, and burdens that they won't help anybody else to carry. See, a lot of people in their pride, they just love to lord it over people. They just love to be the boss. They just love to be the, they just love to tell people what to do. They just love to make extra rules that are not necessary. Um, Government. Not only that, but you, I mean, you get that everywhere. You get that in the church. You get that, in, you know, in certain other religious circles. You get that in certain, in, in you know, places of work. You know, that's pride. That's pride, where people just love to make extra rules that are just unnecessary. It's unnecessary, burdensome rules. Okay, verse five. But they do 
but they do all their works to be seen by men. This is their motive. Their motive is to just to get people to look at, and look at them and say how holy they are. See how, how much God uses them. Oh, look at look how much of the presence and power of God. Look at how much of, you know, how holy I am. Look at how, how good I am. They make their phylacteries. And the note here is uh, phylacteries. Let me just see here. Got a, phylacteries, tefillin. Tefillin in Hebrew are small leather pouches that some Jewish men wear on their forehead and, in, and on their arm in prayer. They even do that today, to this very day. They are used to carry a small scroll with some scripture in it. It says, see Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8. Jesus, it's very important. Jesus didn't preach against this. But he said this. He said, but they do all their works to be seen by men. That, that's, that's, the, that's the punchline there. The motivation. To be seen by men. To be seen. They make their phylacteries, their tefillin, broad and enlarge the fringes of their garments. The fringes, again, is uh, the tassels or the, the Hebrew zitzit, according to Numbers. Uh, in the book of Numbers, where it commands that uh, you are to make uh, these uh, tassels with a blue thread in it to remind you to obey the commands of God, to symbolize the Torah. So they make the phylacteries broad and they make the tassels super long just so they go around. So people would say, oh, look at how holy they are. Oh, look, look at how great they are. Look how much they are obeying the word of God. How, how, you know, how, how, how good they are, how spiritual they are, how religious they are. And love the place of honor at feasts. They love to sit on right next to the to the to the big the big the big shot right they love to sit right next to the big shot they love to have the the great the big and mighty seats at the feasts the best seats in the synagogues verse 7 the salutations in the marketplaces they love to, for people to say hello to them how you doing they love people to to look at them they love for people to uh, to pay attention to them oh look at me look how good i look look how holy i am look how good i am these are Pharisees that are hypocrites. Last half of verse 7. And to be called rabbi, rabbi by men. Okay, the NU, the oldest uh, manuscripts, uh, many believe to be the oldest manuscripts, omits the second rabbi. Okay, so they love to be called rabbi by men. They love to be have, have this, oh, to be dignified and to be, and to be, and to be lifted up in exaltation have great titles be careful with people who just love to be called rabbi or love you know i know this guy who got ordained and he the guy doesn't even know how to spell his own name i am serious he doesn't even know how to spell his own name and he after he got ordained <laughs> who ordained him it just tells you the state of the christian church anyway but uh after that he just he just wanted everybody to call him reverend 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 you know, there's a lot of people that want to be called pastor. They just love, want, you know, they just, they just want everybody to call them pastor, rabbi, reverend, bishop, prophet. Be careful about, be careful. Be careful. Uh, those who give themselves the title prophet. If they give themselves the title prophet, there's a big clue. There's a big clue probably most likely almost always maybe always <laughs> want just to be recognized by men or just want to have the the pomp a pompous pompous reputation not godly not true not good not good not what jesus wants not biblical nah reject it want good advice reject it Verse 8, but you are not to be called rabbi, for one is your teacher. So the, the word rabbi means teacher. One is your teacher, the Mashiach, the Messiah, in Greek, the Christ. And all of, and all of you are brothers. And once again, I, that's what I understand about the difference. One of the one of the differences between the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church, where the Roman Catholic has this hierarchy and this, they have this pompous, pont, you know, Pontius kind of guy that you know this 
potentate, the Pope. Whereas the Orthodox Church don't necessarily want to have, it's like, it's more like they want to keep it more on, you know, the same level as opposed to have to really, you know, exalt one guy. Okay, so all of you are brothers. You're brothers, okay? Uh, not that you got one guy that's the great pastor. I know, you know somebody says, you know, uh, you know, some people, they only believe, you know, what's on TV, uh, uh, preachers that preach on TV. They only believe preachers that got a big name or, or, you know, famous preachers instead of believing, you know, this lowly guy that's on the street corner preaching. And that's wrong. That's wrong. You're all brothers. If the guy on TV, if, big if, if he's really truly saved and living according to the word of God, living according to the instructions and guidelines and laws of God, if he really is, if he's on the same level as the guy on the street corner that really doesn't have much of anything, but he's preaching the word of God. In fact, I tell you the truth, there are people that are on the street corner that doesn't really have much of anything and they are, they're in a better place with God than some of these high and mighty guys that, 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 uh, that's got the, the title bishop, prophet, pastor, rabbi, whatever, okay? Verse 9, Call no man on, on the earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven, okay? Now again, we take this, we don't, people like to take scriptures and take it out of context or just, isolate it from the rest of scripture. Now, Jesus is not saying that you don't have any father, you don't have any other fathers except for the father, your father in heaven. Um, he's talking about people who just love to be called father, love to be seen by men, love to have that, that reputation, you know, in the context, because he says, you know, we should honor your father and your mother, you know, not to speak evil of your father or mother. So, of course, uh, in, other, in other scriptures, in other uh, instances uh, where Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, uh, he rebuked them uh, for not honoring their earthly father. Okay? So, take this in context. Call no man on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. So, basically, you need to understand that the father in heaven is the father. The father. Okay? So don't hold your earthly father over the father. But the father commanded you to honor your earthly father and not speak evil, evil of him. Verse 10, neither be called masters. Huh, masters, bosses, supervisors, whatever you might call it. Neither be called masters, for one is your master. The Mashiach, the Messiah. In Greek, you know, Christos, the Christ. Verse 11, but he who is greatest among you will be your servant. So you want to be great? You want to be great? Be the servant of all. Verse 12, whoever exalts himself, there's the key word there, himself will be humbled. God will throw him down. But whoever humbles himself will be exalted. As it says in James and in Proverbs and such, God opposes the proud but he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he, God himself, will lift you up. If you want someone to lift you up, let it be God, not anybody else. Verse 13, woe to you, woe. Again, this is, this is a curse word. This is cursing. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites! Here's this meek and mild, lovely Jesus who loves everybody according to modern day corrupt Christianity. He loves everybody. He's such a kind and loving and nice guy. He wouldn't offend anybody. And that's the way the pastor should be today. <clears throat> really? Excuse me? What Bible are you reading? What foundation is your doctrine on let's go by the truth let's go by the real the real word of god let's go by the real scriptures okay let's go by the real manuscripts here whoa curse G jesus called curses down not only on individuals but on groups of people he actually called curses down on s entire cities too but that's in another that's in another place in the scriptures but 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses. Now, if you know anything about the ways of God, you should know that the fatherless and the widows have a very special place in God's heart. And if you want to be in line with God's heart, you should have the widows, those whose husbands have passed away and they need help. You should help them. And fatherless, the fatherless, those who have no father, be a father to them. Father them. Help them. Give them what they that they, that they don't have. They need they need a strong male masculine figure in their life because they don't have it. And oh, how we lack that today, don't we? This is God's heart. So woe, curses upon the Fer- the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and as a pretense, you pretend. You make long prayers. So your long prayers are not really heartfelt or really, really um, sincere. They're just long prayers because you want people to notice you. Oh, look at how great he prays. Look how long he prays. Look how, look how much he can pray. Look how, look how, you know, how much time he, sp- he spends in prayer to be seen by men. Therefore, you will receive the greater condemnation. Notice, greater condemnation. So there is a lesser condemnation and there is a greater condemnation, just as there is a greater, a greater, a greater sin and a lesser sin. There is a greater commandment and a lesser commandment. Okay? Not all commandments of God, not all of the Torah is equal. Not all of the laws and commands are equal. Not all sins are equal. Here, you will receive the greater condemnation. Wow. Con- oh, how Jesus, oh, you know, have you ever had anybody say, oh, you're too, you're too, you're too condescending, condescending. You're too, you're too judgmental. You're too judgmental. You, 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 why condemn people? Jesus said, judge not. Uh, 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 let's be like Jesus, Okay. Jesus said that you know, he came to be an example. One of the great, one of the one of the reasons why he came, and and one of the reasons why we have this this text, is to show us how he preached, how he lived, what he said. He is our perfect example. He condemned people. Remember when he said, "Judge not." He wasn't talking to his disciples. He was talking to the hypocrites. He was talking to the hypocrites. He was talking to people who condemned other people for doing the exact same things they are doing. Not what they used to do because and they repented. If you used to do something, if you used to steal, but you've repented long ago and you don't steal no more, you're a completely different person. Yeah, you can tell someone else who's a thief that it's wrong. Yeah, sure you can. Yeah, you can judge them. Jesus said, after you remove the plank out of your eye, then you can remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Verse 14, but woe to you. Again, woe. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. Again, he loved to use that word hypocrites, didn't he? Because you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you don't enter in yourselves. Oh my. Wow, he really gives it to him, doesn't he? You shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You shut the doors of the kingdom of heaven. You don't even enter yourselves. Neither do you allow those who are entering in to enter. Some Greeks, uh, it says here in the note, some Greek texts reverse the order of verses 13 and 14, and some omit verse 13, numbering verse 14 as 13. Uh, NU omits verse 14. Okay. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you travel around by sea and land. You travel or you go to extreme, you take extreme measures to make one proselyte, to convert somebody. When he becomes a one, when he when he becomes a one of your converts, you make him twice as much a son of Gehenna. You make him twice as as much a son of hell as yourselves. Huh? 
Again, this is the real Jesus. He condemned entire groups of people. He called people hypocrites like like it was nothing. Like he, he called them hypocrites so many so many times. It's like he just did it as he as he breathes. He called people sons of hell. Oh, but Jesus, you love everybody. Oh, your precious creation. Uh-uh. Really? Look how he treats these people. Look how he speaks of these people. Can you imagine these people after he publicly, remember this, this is publicly in front of all of the, all of the general public, in front of the multitudes and his disciples. Can you imagine after having these things said, you know, said about you, can you imagine going, going out and joining hands in a circle, like a, like a healing circle and say, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Really? Really? Where? Verse 16, woe to you blind guides. Not only are you sons of hell, not only are you hypocrites, you're blind. Woe to you, blind guides. When's the last time you've heard a pastor preach like this? But he should be. A pastor is supposed to take this as his, as his example. WWJD, what would Jesus do? This is what Jesus would do. He would call out the hypocrites. A lot of people don't go to church because the church is so full of hypocrites. It's true. You go to church and these people that are shaking your hand, smiling and, and kissing you, hugging you and saying nice to see you and all this kind of stuff are the same people who are sinning the rest of the week. Blind guides. The pastor should be calling out the hypocrites. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obligated. You blind fools. Jesus called them fools. For which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever, and these people say, and whoever swears by the altar, it's nothing. But whoever swears by the gift that's on the altar, he's obligated. You see, these people were more, more concerned about the gold and, and the gift, the gift would be the sacrificed animal, which would be the meat. They were more concerned about the barbecue. They were more concerned about the barbecue and meat and the gold than they were about the actual temple and the altar. What did Jesus say about them? Oh, you know, you shouldn't do that. You're, you know, I love you, but, you know, I don't, agree with, I don't agree with what you do. I love you, but I don't still love what you do. He didn't say that. He said, you blind fools. You blind fools. Can you imagine a pastor saying that today to one of his members of his congregation? You blind fool. Which is greater? Can you imagine that person going away saying, oh, pastor, how you love me. That's how much Jesus loved these people. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, uh, excuse me. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it with your modern day corrupt Christian doctrine. Let's go by the word of God here. Let's go by the actual words in red. Let's go by what Jesus actually said and how he said it. What he actually said here. You blind fools. Which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? These people are more concerned about just having their, the material things for themselves. Like Judas, you know, I'm more concerned about the, the, the money because he carries the bag because he dips his hand in it. Verse 20, uh, he, th he therefore who swears by the altar swears by it and everything on it. He who swears by the temple swears by it, by it and by him who has been living in it. The NU reads lives, the NU being the oldest manuscripts. Verse 22, he who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. Verse 23, again, more cursing. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! What's the word hypocrite mean? You pretend. It's just a word means you, you pretend. You're a good actor. You're a good actor. I know who, what you're really like. You're a sinner, but you act like, the, you act like you're holy. You act righteous, but you're a real sinner. 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint, dill, and cumin. It says here, cumin is an aromatic seed from cuminum, simin, siminum, resembling caraway in flavor and appearance, in appearance, it is used as a spice. For you tithe mint, dill, and cumin, and have left undone the weightier matters of the law. Again, notice there are weightier matter, matters. Not every command is equal. Is not true. In a specific sense, if you break one commandment, you break them all. That's not true. Jesus said it right here. Remember this. Remember this, everybody. Hello. Remember. Matthew 23, 23 tells you. It should be easy to remember. Attention, attention. Easy to remember. Matthew 23, 23 is a good one to explain to people that there are weightier matters of the law, which means there are commands that are there are less commands and there are commands that are greater commands. So if you break a lesser command, a lighter command, it's not as serious as if you're breaking a, a heavier command, a, a, a greater command. Not all commands are equal. What are the weightier matters of the Torah? What are the heavier matters, the, the, more, the greater, the more serious, the more important matters of the Torah? Jesus says, justice, mercy, and faith. Justice is a big one because, I mean, you talk about justice, you talk about justice for everybody. The widows, the sick, you talk about justice for the street preacher telling you to repent. I'm, I'm talking about treating him as if you treat the Lord himself. Justice for the unborn. Oh, yeah. Justice eludes a lot, much of the developed world today. But you, Jesus said, ought to have done these and not to have left the other undone. You blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. How much more is a camel than a gnat? How many gnats can you fit in, in, a, in a camel? For those of you, I mean, there, might be the, <laughs> there might be a person out there that doesn't know what a gnat is. And that is a very, very, very small little fly that flies around sometimes. You might see him. How much more is a camel than a gnat? But Jesus said that, generally speaking again, the, the scribes and the Pharisees strain out a gnat. They look at so these little nitpicking, nitpicking, you know, these little things, but they completely ignore the, gr the, the huge matters, you know? They strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Wow. Verse 25. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Again, cursing and <laughs> nails it down again. Hypocrites. You're a hypocrite. You say one thing, but you don't practice it. You, you, you preach something only for your own gain. But you don't practice it towards your enemies, toward those who speak against you, you hypocrite. For you clean out you clean the outside of the cup and, the, and, and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and unrighteousness. The TR, like the uh, King James, would read self-indulgence instead of unrighteousness. So in other words, you clean the outside of the cup of, and the platter, which basically Jesus used the term cup or dish or bowl to represent a person. In other words, you look good on the outside. You look all spick and span on the outside. You look all clean and sparkly and, you know, the glitz and the glory on the outside. But on the inside, whoa, you're full of filth and wickedness. Can anybody say Hollywood or anything like that? I never forget a long time ago I was on the street and I met a friend of mine who was a uh, uh, a really good, um, you know, he was a very respectable man of God. This was back when I was a teenager, you know, I didn't know much back then. And he said to me, he said, you know, I was in Hollywood, you know, and from where I come from, it's like, wow, you were in Hollywood? Really, man? Like, wow, that's cool, man. He said, yeah, I was in Hollywood. Now I'll tell you, he said, it's a, it's, 
it's it's a ghetto. It's 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 filthy. It's is nothing to it. It's dark. It's dim. It's it's uh, you know don't be don't be uh, don't be deceived by Hollywood. Um, and I never forget that. You know, the glitz and the glory, it's just on the outside. How many of you people you bought an apple? You you go to the grocery store, you get apples or you know pears, plums, especially plums these days. It looks great and shiny on the outside, you know, very colorful. You cut it open, it's rotten on the inside. That's what Jesus is saying here. On the outside, you look good, but on the inside, you're just full of extortion, wickedness, wickedness, unrighteousness, self-indulgence. Self-indulgence, notice. Verse 26, because you know a lot of these people who like to, uh, a lot of these people who judge you for judging, the hypocrites who judge you for judging, the, ju- the hypocrites that say, oh, you shouldn't judge. I mean, I, you, know, you, you hypocrite, you're judging me for judging. Um, you know, these people are the same way. Like they're full of wickedness on the inside. They like to, they, they take one thing that Jesus said, do not judge. They take it out of context, obviously. But they completely ignore this stuff. They don't take this seriously. Right? They're nitpicking. Verse 26, You blind Pharisee! First clean the inside. First clean the inside of the cup and the platter. That its outside may become clean also. So really, once you clean the inside of the cup, that's all that really ma- That's the main thing. That's the most important thing. If it's clean on the inside... It's, it's clean. Verse 27. If you're clean on the inside, you're clean. Doesn't matter how much glitz, glory, or however, you know, however good you like to look. Again, verse 27. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Seems like he loved to... How often did Yeshua, the Messiah, call curses down on people? How often did they call him hypocrites? Again, this is our example, okay? We need to live holy like he lived. Actually, he even said, be perfect as your heavenly Father in heaven is perfect. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. So, Jesus is saying we should live like, take God as as our example. As it says, you know, God rested on the, on the seventh day, and that's why we're commanded to rest on the seventh day. God is holy. That's why we're commanded to be holy. God is not, God tells the truth. God uh, is not an adulterer. That's why we're called to be people who do not commit adultery. God is not a, um, you know, false witness. That's why we're called, I mean, all of the commandments are just reflective of just the character of God. If the commandments change, if the commandments are not in effect, then neither is the character of God himself. If, if the Torah is not in effect today, then neither is God himself. Because the Torah is a mirror reflection of God. That's why, that's why James said if you read the, the scriptures and you don't do it, it's like you're looking into a mirror. Because the Torah is a mirror. It's a mirror of yourself. It's a mirror of God. It reflects God. It reflects yourself. Verse 27, Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites, for you are like whitened tombs, which are outwardly, you know, you appear to be beautiful, but inwardly are full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Now, in many places in the scriptures, the word iniquity is, comes from the Greek word anomia, which is negative or no, or uh, living like there's no, uh, it's a negative of nomia, uh, nomia nomos, which is a word for Torah. Those who live like there's no Torah, those who live against Torah, those who live in a negative way uh, in, in regards to the Torah. Notice Jesus here, the loving, so kind and so wonderful, sweet Jesus. He said to people, you're like whitewashed tombs. You look so beautiful on the outside, but inside you're filthy, stinky, stinking, rotten, filthy flesh. Stinking, rotten, disgusting on the inside. 
you know, appalling, repulsive. That's what he's saying here. Verse 29, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. How many times does he say, woe to you? How many times does he do this? Woe to you, Pharise scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tombs of the prophets. Oh, you, you build the tombs. Oh, these are one, God's wonderful prophets, you know. And decorate the tombs of the righteous and say, if we have, had lived in the days of our fathers, fathers, we wouldn't have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore, you testify to yourselves that you are children of those who killed the prophets. Jesus is saying, you call them, your, you know, you, 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 you admit they're your fathers. So therefore, if they're your fathers, you are part of them. Fill up, then, the measure of your fathers. Verse 33, that's why, it's, you know, it's very, very important to honor your father. You speak, if someone speaks against your father, they're speaking against you. Verse 30, uh, 33. You serpents! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Hot! Hot, man, hot. That's hot. You serpents! You snakes! You offspring of vipers! Offspring of vipers? There's a lot of people, stupid people out there that think that every single person is a child of God. Uh, really? Jesus called people in John chapter 8 sons of hell? No, excuse me, sons of Satan in John chapter 8. Here, sons of hell, sons of serpents, sons of vipers and snakes, which is a symbol of evil. Not sons of God, not offspring of God, not children of God, children of the devil. How will you escape from the judgment of Gehenna? How will you escape the judgment of hell? Now, Gehenna here, we know, is a place that was in uh, Israel, which was a place of, uh, it was like the city dump. It was a fire that was continually burning. They would just throw your, throw your garbage in the fire. It would always be burning. Now, that was a symbol. That was a prophetic symbol of a spiritual place, which is actually a real place called hell, which, you know, which... It, the doctrine of hell goes all the way back, way before the book of Genesis, all the way back into the book of Enoch. Okay, so yeah, the doctrine of hell uh, is uh, when he talks about Gehenna, uh, he's talking about uh, a place that was represented of hell. Okay, trash, a trash heap of, that was continually burning. Verse 34. Now I'm going to get into more about the teaching of hell, by the way, uh, but... Uh, Stick, stick, stick in there. Those of you who uh, um, are interested in knowing more of what I have to, what I have to say about that. But verse thirty-four. Therefore, behold, I send you, I send to you the pro uh, prophets, wise men, and scribes. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. He said, "There, therefore, behold, look, take notice, notice, look at this, okay, look, 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 notice." I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will crucify. You will kill and crucify. So right now, Jesus is prophesying to these people. And some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. Yeah, in synagogues. You know, back then, they didn't have places like the church. Again, Jesus had all the opportunity to, opportunity to say to his disciples, "Well, let's 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 migrate out of synagogues now, and let's go and have our own little thing called church." No, it's not biblical. It really isn't. The church is the people, the ecclesia, the the ones who are called out from the world, the ones who are called to be separate, set apart. The church, the people, the real church, went to synagogue. But yeah. There will be people that, there's a lot of churches today that will reject you if you preach the truth. <laughs> it's the way it is. Because they're so much caught up in their own little fantasy world of their own little golden calf, Jesus. 
Yeah, they will scourge you, persecute you, persecute you from city to city, that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth. From the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who is Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you killed between the sanctuary and the altar. Most certainly, I tell you, all these things will come upon this generation. Ooh, <laughs> that's hot. What more can Jesus say? He called them almost everything in the book, except for, I mean, he even called, he called them murderers. He said, you, upon you, you will have to pay. You will have to give an account for all of the righteous blood that was ever shed on earth. <gasps> that's serious stuff. Verse 37, Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I would have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left to you desolate. In other words, no children. That's a curse. That's verse 38. Verse 39. For I tell you, you will not see me from now on until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Psalm 118 verse 26. Now, don't miss the next session. Verse uh, chapter 24. Because that is one of the most, that's one of the, <laughs> that's talking about the end times, the last days. Lots to say about that. But until then, be blessed and, you know, meditate upon his word. May God enrich you with wisdom and knowledge above your peers. Enlighten the hearts of your understanding and give you peace. Thanks for watching.